All right, guys. Pilot Steve here with the TTX. Got a flight tomorrow, so I'm gonna check on everything real quick. Check the oil levels. Check the fuel. Get it all pre-flighted before the flight. So when I come out here at dark 30 in the morning, halfway freezing, I'll be ready to go. But uh, I've had a lot of questions from you guys about why I have both the Lancer and the TTX. And the question kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have two airplanes. Let's just put it that way. And the TTX is my workhorse. I mean, it carries myself and the family and business people and whoever I need to go usually to do a business or a family trip and I can put everybody in here and all the stuff I need to carry and it's a great airplane don't get me wrong it I still think it's the best single engine piston plane in its class much better than the Cirrus I think but not the parachute but that's the only difference it's got better avionics better performance I think better construction it's a utility category airplane versus a, a regular category, so it's much stronger airplane. And uh, it's just great. It just it does what I need, takes me wherever I need to go. But I've been flying for over 40 years. And um, at some point, you just want to do it for fun, more for business or traveling or whatever and um, that's why I got the Lancer obviously the TTX and the Lancer have a lot of legacy in common they both came out of the same design um, Lancer was the original manufacturer of the of the Corvallis brand so to speak and then decided to go from the Lancer 4P and 4 and ES and all those kit builds, they decided to get into the certified world and that's where the Columbia brand came from. And um, that lasted a few years and then Cessna bought it. And that was about the end of it. Cessna built some and had a lot of problems and just decided at some point they went ahead and updated the the line to the TTX which the TTX is basically the exact same airplane as the Columbia I had a Columbia 400 for 10 years and it was just as good airplane there's no difference the basic difference is the panel they went from a G1000 which there again is great avionics to the G2000 and I believe this is the only production airplane that has the G2000 and it's basically the same displays you'll find in the Malibu uh, and some of the the piston, excuse me, not piston, but turboprop airplanes. And um, then you'll find them in the light jets, like the Citation jet. It'll it'll either be a G3000 or a G5000. And this is the same exact panel. The main difference is it's got two screens versus three. And it's got one touch pad versus two or three. Uh, and it wound up in the Vision, the Sears Vision jet. And uh, it'd have been great if they put it in the Sears SR20 line uh, at some point. Uh, they call that the perspective avionics, what's in there now. And it's basically a G1000 setup, but there's buttons everywhere. And I just don't like all those buttons. And I like the clean panel of the TTX. Let me show it to you here. You can see it's just clean. Uh, the autopilot and altitude and all that stuff is up top there just like in the jets. And then you have the bigger screens. These are the 12 inch displays. And then the single touch pad. And the touch pad is what uh, all the work is done there. I mean, you, you just, it's a very smart touchpad. It changes depending on what you punch up. You can look stuff up there. You can get weather there. You can get airport information, whatever. These also displace 
and it'll display charts, electronic charts. And um, of course, it'll do all the ILS work for you, the auto tracking of the ILSs and RNAV approaches and all that good stuff. So it's it's a great panel, and it's very clean. You don't have hundreds of buttons everywhere, and it's very intuitive and lets you keep your heads up most of the time. Just just works well. So, like I say, it's a great airplane, but the Lance Air. Uh, for me, is my personal transportation. It's what I fly for fun, or what I intend to fly for fun. And um, obviously when you own an airplane, you always want to go faster and higher. So um, that plane will allow me to do up to 250 knots depending on altitude. And it's a very comfortable plane. You get in it and it's like wearing the airplane. Um, so that will be my personal mode of transportation uh, when I'm not flying family or business partners. So that's why I bought the Lancer and that's why I have the two airplanes basically. Um, the TTX is, may not fit my mission here going forward. I don't do a lot of on-site trips anymore. Most of them are over Zoom. All my meetings are Zoom based. So. I only have two or three places a year to go business-wise in the TTX. You know, like I say, I do use it to go see family and all, but you know, a lot of times I'm by myself. The last trip I made in this airplane, a couple weeks ago, I flew to Miami and back to go to a ball game. I have a daughter at the University of Miami. I went to visit her. And so I was flying by myself in the TTX, made it down to Miami in about two hours and 45 minutes, came back, my fuel bill was over $900, which, you know, if you're flying these things, it's going to be expensive. But that same trip in the Lance Air, I think would have been about four to $500, this, this plane. I mean, it's the same engine, but uh, the way you run them, I'm probably burning twice as much gas in here per mile as I do in the, in the, will do in the Lance Air. I won't know till I get it in the air and be able to do some performance stuff, which I'll, I'll definitely do some videos on and let you see what it's like, but uh, that's another reason. I mean, it's not just the idea of the money, it's the idea of using that much fuel just for me. I mean, I could have taken three other people with me and been the same fuel bill. You know, a lot of cases I don't have anybody else to go with me, so that's the mission difference. So the TTX is here. Whether or not I'll keep it forever, probably, probably won't. Let's just put it that way. I may wind up with only the Lancer, depending on how much I like it and how much I want to fix it up more. But that's the reason. So um, we'd enjoy some comments and see what you guys think about that. And now I'm going to check a little ladder here. I have this flight tomorrow. I've noticed, you guys, I don't know how much you can see it. When I came back from Miami, the plane is, is somewhat dirty. It's got a lot of oil on the belly. And I don't know if you remember the an older video I did, but in the summer I had a bad oil leak. And it turned out to be a, we needed to overhaul the prop governor. It was leaking oil real bad. So there's a lot of oil, I think, left still on the plane from that. But I don't know. When I was coming back from Miami, I was looking for clouds to go through to try to get a free car wash. Most of the clouds I went into were bumpy, but not wet. So, I mean, it did clean it up a little bit, but um, not a whole lot. So, anyhow, I'm going to check real quick the oil, see how we're doing. Make sure I don't have any more leaks anymore. Here, show you what it's like to check the oil on an IL 550. It's pretty easy. I'm a little bit short, so I have to have this ladder. But basically, we're gonna get up here, open the little hatch, and there's the oil. Take it loose. And take a quick look here and see what we got. Oh, we got plenty of oil. 
all's looking good. Yeah, it's almost full. So obviously we don't have any oil leaks. So the oil that's on the plane now is probably left over from the big oil leak. So we're good. Well, check the fuel. Should be full. I usually fill them up when I get back just so no moisture will form in the tank. And I didn't fill it all the way, but it's almost full. Let's look on this side. Yeah. So we're basically full. Might be five gallons or so shy of being full. But it's plenty for my trip tomorrow, so. I'll take you along for a ride tomorrow if I can. And uh, let you see what it looks like again in the TTX. Pilot Steve, see you in the next video.